Six years ago, I returned from Canada to start a software development company in Barbados. My intentions were to serve both the local and international market. Months after starting my business on the island, I realized I was faced with a problem. I can build international products, but I couldn't receive the payment for them. So I was left with a choice. What do I do when I can develop amazing things and develop amazing products for the region, but what happens then when I couldn't receive a payment? It led with to an epiphany that we actually needed a financial inclusion solution. Around 2 billion people in the world do not have access to financial institution services. Approximately half of the adults in the world do not have checking or banking accounts. What results as a reality is that a very big part of the world is cut off from financial access. With over 2 billion adults not having financial inclusion access, you can start to imagine a future where people are cut off or cut out of the international market. In the United States, for example, for every 100,000 people, there are 200 ATMs. Canada boasts 230 ATMs for every 100,000 people. But in Barbados, we have 30 ATMs for every 100,000 people. In Trinidad, 32 ATMs for every 100,000 people. And in Jamaica, 29 ATMs for every 100,000 people. So as a reality, what are you looking at here? You're looking at a banking infrastructure that is refusing to make the investments and allow the communities or the countries that they're operating in to thrive, to grow, to have access to these resources. Financial inclusion is synonymous with business inclusion. Entrepreneurs are the lifeblood of the industries, are the more modern industries. And when an entrepreneur is gutted before he can even start, or forced out of a market before he can even enter, you have a very serious problem. As a matter of fact, you have a humanitarian and a moral problem that needs to be adequately addressed. The good news is the playing field is being leveled. So while there only may be 30 ATMs for every 100,000 people in Jamaica, with a population of 2.9 million, 2.8 million people in Jamaica have mobile phones. Compare this to Trinidad and Tobago, where cell phone penetration rate is 159%, Barbados, 106%, Haiti, 73%, Dominican Republic, 86%. We are on parity with the developed nations when it comes to financial inclusion through mobiles. We are on parity when it comes down to services like internet and mobile penetration rate. So this gives the question, why aren't we there? This is what's required right now, a complete digital overhaul. An overhaul of the financial system that allows us to have financial services that are absolutely digital. These digital services cut the frictional cost down dramatically. They allow everyone to be involved in the system. They allow for transactions to occur on a much more frictionless level with regards to micro transactions. Let's look at Kenya, for example. M-Pesa launched in Kenya a couple of years ago. Now, Kenya represents, or rather, M-Pesa represents more than 50% of all transactions. More than 50% of transactions in Kenya are now digital with more than 12 million people accessing that network. Kenya has seen 18% GDP growth over the last five years. But that's not it. The Caribbean has a unique window of opportunity here. And the problem that we're facing outside of the financial inclusion is the problem of de-risking. De-risking is when banks decide that your account is too risky to keep open. De-risking can occur at an institutional level, at a corporate level, or at an entire banking country level. So what happens when these banks start to look at the risking ratings of companies? When there's new levels of implications added through anti-money laundering programs, counter-terrorism counter financing legislation. These increase the uh, cost towards banking facilities. These increase the cost towards accessibility. But most importantly, this de-risking comes at a very real threat. A threat of alienating the Caribbean from a global market or alienating um, up-and-coming, undeveloped nations from a global market. The solutions there are in place if we were to start working with regulators, if we were to start working with governments. For example, if we look at India in 2015, they launched a new type of bank called a payment bank, a bank that didn't do interest, didn't do loans, didn't do mortgages. It just strictly allowed people to bank cash in, cash out services, giving a complete payment channel of ATMs, tellers, merchants, and the ability to send and receive money through your smartphone. 
This is something that was done in 2015 in India. In addition to those kind of solutions, we have technology, distributed ledger technology like Bitcoin that allow all of us to have access to a Swede, Swedish bank account in our pockets, if you will. Using, coming together, and bringing all actors of the system, from the central banks to the governments to the financial institutions, all the way down to the merchants to credit unions. If we bring all of these actors together, and we were to propose a solution of new regulation, a new way of thinking of banking, a new way of thinking of how we solve the problem of financial inclusion. And we started applying these different technologies, ranging from distributed ledgers to the payment banks. This would allow us to start looking at a homegrown indigenous solution, giving us the true independence, giving us the ability to actually craft our own fate. You want to see entrepreneurship thrive? You want to see economies boom? I'll give you an interesting statistic. For every 1% of financial inclusion growth that a country sees, there will be 3.6% of GDP growth. This means that if we were to actually come around as a solution or a society, as a country or a region or a territory, and start looking at these new innovative ways and start being scared of the monsters in the closets and actually focused, then we might very well be able to solve a lot of problems in the world. But specifically, we can empower people and empower them to empower others. Thank you.